Uh, in the call to action, there are sort of four uh, focal points. Um, new places for new people, leadership development, missional engagement, and justice and reconciliation. Uh, and in part, this is a way of simplifying the boards and agencies, but for me, it's also become a way of thinking about the church in a simple way. Some of you are familiar with the language of simple church. Uh, and so what we're primarily thinking about today uh, is new places for new people. Now, I know that in our annual conference, a lot of women and men are appointed to places that they find uh, disheartening or constraining or boring. Is that anybody ever had that experience? <laughs> okay, you, you haven't, but maybe some of your friends have and they've told you about it. But, uh, and, and so we get to these places and, and they just don't call forth from us the passion that led us into this life in the first place. You know, we probably felt the call to ministry to make disciples. It was about the Great Commission. Uh, we felt a call to lead people to Christ, to, to uh, make the church relevant in the world, to make a difference, and we find ourselves dying in a, in a sea of what John was talking about, the denominationalism, the discipline, the committees, the, the grind. Uh, I think what John and I and Nancy and Amy and others, our contribution in part to all this is to really try to create a culture which is to say a part of that is your work, but not all of it. That a part of our essential work, wherever we are, is to help create new places for new people. And that can happen wherever you are. One day I was, uh, I was doing my work this fall and I met with two different people in this district and that it happened to be on the same day. One was Alan Mears and Chuck Wilson and they are engaged in a pretty large scale new church plant, which, which is essential for our denomination. And a lot of this is that we aren't talking about either or, it's both and. And then, and then later that day, I met with a, a woman, a very gifted clergy woman who serves four churches. And she told me about the smallest of those churches that when she got there, had 10 in worship. And now it has 24 in worship. And that there is a Bible study at the subway. And the subway is the only public space in that community. You know, this is, it's, it's the only public space. And she and there's a Bible study that she leads that has six people and four are not in the church. And that's a new place for new people. And what God was teaching me that day was it can happen in the biggest venues and it can happen in the smallest venues. And, and so I shared that to say, wherever you are, you can start a new place for new people. Now, what I love about what Elaine Heath is doing is that she's giving us a way to do that. And I think it is a way that's Methodist. Uh, it's a way that taps into our DNA. Uh, it gives us a rule of life. It, it helps us inwardly, spiritually. She relates it to the, to the, to the membership vows we take as Methodist. And, but it also puts us in connection to the poor. Uh, and I think, and I mean, it, and I'm not a genius in saying this, but I think we probably are in for a long time of very high poverty in our country and in our state and in our annual <coughs> conference. Uh, and the church can be God's instrument to come alongside people in poverty and share the gospel with them. And as John was saying, a lot of these people are not going to c come through the threshold of the doors of our church. We're going to have to be where they are. And so this missional movement is very exciting. Um, the, uh, to me, the Wesleyan tradition 
is in perfect alignment with the missional church movement because we began as a missional church movement. You know, Wesley, he was in the field preaching. Uh, he started the Kingswood schools for the children of the coal miners. He was an amateur pharmacist in a country where there was no, where there was no access to health care. I mean, just imagine people not having access to health care. Uh, and uh, and this, was, this was not an add-on to what he did. This was his original work of, of creating a missional move, movement, and he really was all about new places for new people, leadership development, class meetings, missional engagement, and justice and reconciliation. Uh, and so that's what this is about. Uh, we know that we're at the beginning of something. We don't have control over it. We do think the Holy Spirit's a part of it, and people like Shelley and Mike and a lot of, a lot of you. Uh, but we also know that when you're creating something, how you create it tends to be what it becomes. And so a key part of this really is leadership development, the second piece. Uh, Nancy and I have heard a guy named Dave Ferguson speak, uh, and he's, he talks a lot about replication, which is really making disciples replication, which is identifying new leaders. What if every clergy person in our annual conference had, had the commission in the coming year to develop one new leader, disciple, one new person? Uh, and John and I have talked, if we create these missional communities and we don't develop new leaders, we're just going to all grow old together. <laughs> and we're going to be the same disgruntled small group. We have to have in our DNA immediately identifying new leaders. And, and really, we're talking about younger leaders. People who, who will become leaders alongside us and help this movement multiply. And the early Methodist movement did multiply. And again, there, there's a model for this as well. Um, John, I have really loved working with John this year as, as this is unfolding. And, and it's not just that it's our districts, because certainly other superintendents are, are involved in this too. But our sort of vision, and, and as we talk about this region of the conference, it's not that it is contained here, but is, this is just where we happen to be, and we hope it, it becomes conference-wide. But our initial vision is, there's, is that there's a network of missional communities from really Hayesville to Saluda, Brevard, Saluda, and pushing eastward. In this area, a network of about 16 to 18 missional communities. That are, that are all small, uh, but they have a somewhat similar DNA and that they live by a rule of life, as Wesleyan, uh, that they are adjacent to the poor, uh, that they're developing new leaders, that they have identified some justice issue in their community, and that they are outside the walls of the church. Uh, so we're not talking about starting a new worship service inside a church. We're talking about something that is outside the church in the community. Uh, and that's very exciting to me. And I know that this will sprout up. It, it is sprouting up in Narrowgate. And it's present in lots of other places uh, in the conference. Um, Sunday morning, I went to River of Life, where Wayner is. He serves Bryson City, and he serves River of Life, which is a new place for new people. And uh, there were people there, uh, my impression of being there was, I go to a lot of small churches, in our, in our, and any DS does, you go to a lot of small churches. And in small churches, you see people my age and older. <laughs> in some cases, everybody you meet is retired. They'll, they'll tell you that, we're all retired. And so it's only a one generation church. It's interesting that when you get to these new places for new people, I'm the oldest person, <laughs> and, uh, and it's like everybody's kind of owned down. Uh, and you notice that uh, they're much more casual, uh, they're, they're much more edgy sometimes. Uh, 
But boy, they are, they are in there with the message. They are in there with trying to relate the gospel to their lives. Uh, and, uh, and that's very exciting. And so what if for every church like I just mentioned, where wonderful people are present who have lived their life together and now are retired, what if for every one of those, we had a new place for new people? I think that's pretty simple. A pretty simple plan that we can do. And I'm really grateful uh, to Elaine Heath, who really is our mentor in all this. And if any of you have not met her, I hope you will. She's going to speak at annual conference next year. She's going to, Jane Woods said she's going to speak at the Congress for Evangelism. She's going to speak to the thriving rural communities uh, gathering at Myrtle Beach. She's kind of becoming our theologian in residence <laughs> for this evangelical movement.